I know that you are smiling underneath those masks, you know. So, uh, scripture reading this morning is um, John chapter 18, verses 1 through 11. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was a garden, and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas, the traitor, was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, Put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Good morning. We are here today to worship the one who said, I am He, the great I am. Come, thou almighty King. We begin our worship service this morning with this song, and after our song, Bill will lead us in prayer. Come, thou almighty King, help us thy name to sing, help us to praise, Father all-glorious, or all-victorious, come and reign over us, ancient of days. Come thou incarnate word, gird on thy mighty sword, our prayer attend. Come and thy people bless, and give thy word success, spirit of holiness, on us descend. O Lord our God, to Thee the highest praises be, hence evermore Thy sovereign majesty may we in glory see and to eternity love and adore. Will you bow with me, please? Almighty God, we come before you this morning trying to picture in our minds being in your throne room. The almighty God, almighty King, creator of all. And Father, even though I know we cannot begin to fathom what your throne room is like, 
we are very humbled and in awe of you. Father, we know how imperfect we are. Each one of us knows in our hearts our shortcomings. But Father, we also know that you know what is in our hearts and all of our shortcomings, yet you have chosen to love us in, in spite of this, to not just love us, but to send your son to die for us because you could not be in contact with us as unholy people. And Jesus willingly sacrificed himself so that we could be seen as righteous in your sight and brought into your family, adopted as your children. And Father, we are truly amazed at that. Amen. And Father, we, we love you in return. And we know that you have a purpose for each and every one of us here. We know that you have a plan that you want us to carry out. And Father, we, we know that often our own desires get in the way of your plan. And we know that we owe you everything. And we know that when we leave this life, that you have prepared a, a better place for us. So, Father, we pray that you will continue to guide us and to help us to be strong, to be your people, to be the light that is so desperate, desperately needed uh, in this world around us. And Father, as you know, we have many, many in our congregation and many that are friends and family and that are suffering in one way or another, whether it be physically, whether it be from loss of loved ones, whether it be from struggles that loved ones are having. And Father, we know that you are aware of every single one of these people and the problems probably better than than us. And Father, the reason we come to you about them is that we know that you are the one that can affect the outcome for each and every one of them. Father, we know that we're not always aware of, of what your will is, but Father, we bring all of these people before you and we pray that you would restore their health if that's what they need, that you would restore their faith if that's what they need. Father, we pray that if they're just struggling with financial problems or some sort of addiction or anything, Father, like I said, you know, you know what it is and we pray that you would be there for them. Father, at least if there's not in your will to, to heal or change their circumstance, we pray that, that they would at least feel your presence and know that you are there, that you love them. Father, we are so thankful to be back here, gathered together as your children here in Hermitage at this building, to be able to be here in person. And Father, we pray that as we go out, go throughout this service, that, that uh, we will do and say what is accordance with your word and your will. And we pray that as we depart from here, that we will share the love throughout the world to everybody that we come into contact with that you have shared with us. And we ask this prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Well, with the weather outside today, this is a fitting song. 
Yes, they are. Uh, gray above us today. And I don't know if you're feeling blue today, but what a gift God has given us to come together as His children, as brothers and sisters in His family, to worship together, to fellowship together, and to leave here irrespective of the sun shining, the snows falling, whatever the weather may be, with a smile on our faces and a song in our hearts because of the time that we've been together as we are this morning. Let's sing together these next few songs. If the skies above you are gray, you are feeling so blue. If your cares and burdens seem great all the whole day through, there's a silver line that shines in the heavenly land. Look by faith and see it, my friend. Trust in his promises grand. Sing and you'll be happy today. Press along to the goal. Trust in him who leadeth the way. He is keeping your soul. Let the world know where you belong. Look to Jesus and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. Oft we fail to troubled and tired, sick with sorrow and pain. There are others living in sin, blessed with earthly gain. Take new courage, we cannot tell what the morrow may bring. When the dark clouds vanish away, then your heart truly can sing. Sing and you'll be happy today, press along to the goal. Trust in him who leadeth the way, he is keeping your soul. Let the world know where you belong, look to Jesus and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song, sing and be happy today. Oft we fail to see the rainbow up in heaven's fair sky. When it seems the fortunes of earth frown and pass us by. There are things we know that are worth more than silver and gold. If we hope and trust him each day, we shall have pleasure untold. Sing and you'll be happy today, press along to the goal. Trust in him who leadeth the way, he is keeping your soul. Let the world know where you belong, look to Jesus and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song, sing and be happy today. Amen. <clears throat> God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He answers prayer, he answers prayer, he answers prayer, he is so good to me, he cares for me, he cares for me. He cares for me, he's so good to me. I love him so, I love him so, I love him so, he's so good to me. Uh, 
as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You're my friend, and you are my brother, even though you are a king. I love you more than any other, so much more than anything. You are my strength, my shield, to you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. I want you more than gold or silver, only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. The song before we break bread together this morning is the song, Is It For Me? And we know that indeed it is for us. And the chorus of this song we'll repeat four times as we sing together this morning. And the words say, O Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore and magnify and praise thee and love thee evermore. <laughs> Is it for me, dear Savior, thy glory and thy rest? For me so weak and sinful, shall I be so blessed? O Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore? And magnify and praise Thee and love Thee evermore. Is it for me thy welcome, thy gracious enter in? For me thy coming ye blessed, for me so full of sin. O Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore? And magnify and praise thee and love thee evermore. O Savior, precious Savior, my heart is at thy feet. I bless thee and I love thee and thee I long to meet. 
O Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore and magnify and praise Thee and love Thee evermore? I'll be with Thee forever and never grieve Thee more. Dear Savior, I must praise Thee and love Thee evermore. O Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore and magnify and Praise Thee and love Thee ever. Amen. This morning I'd like to read from Hebrews chapter 9. The Hebrew writer is contrasting Christ as a priest so much higher than the human priest they had seen up until this point. And he's telling us about the perfect sacrifice and the once and for all sacrifice that was necessary for our sins starting in verse 24 for Christ did not enter a man-made sanctuary that was only a copy of the true one he entered heaven itself now to appear for us in God's presence nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again the way the highest priest enters the most holy place every year with blood that is not his own then Christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world But now he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. Just as man is destined to die once and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people. And he will appear a second time not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. It tells us of the magnitude of his sacrifice the all-encompassing power that it has for all time, for all people. And it also tells us that only when we're in Him is it going to bring salvation when He comes back. So we need to be in Him, baptized into His body, so that when He does return, we're redeemed as one of His And that's what that sacrifice did on the cross 2,000 years ago, is it paid for those sins, but only if we're in him. As we partake of this bread, we remember his body on that cross for us. Let's pray. Father, we know that you are a just God. We know that you have set forth your precepts and given them to us. And we know we fall short, each one of us. But we also know that you had a plan that Christ carried out to come to this earth to live as a man, to die on a cross, even though he was perfect. He was handed over to be crucified for sins or for things that he didn't commit, a trumped up charge. But we know that that was all your plan so that his perfect sacrifice could be made on our behalf. As we partake of this bread, we're reminded of his body nailed to that cross for us. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen.
We know from the examples in the Old Testament that it was only the blood of a pure sacrifice that was acceptable in God's sight. But for us, it's only through Christ's perfect and precious blood that our sins are covered in his sight so that we can appear sinless before him. So as we partake of this fruit of the vine, we're reminded of that blood shed on the cross for us. And the promise is in his word that that blood covers us when we are in him so we can appear before God as sinless. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful for Jesus' blood on the cross. We know his was the only pure and perfect sacrifice suitable for our sins to cover them, to make us appear sinless in your sight. We know that because of what he did, we have access to you, that he is now our mediator, that we can come to you and have fellowship with you because of his sacrifice. As we partake of this fruit of the vine, we're reminded of his blood shed on the cross for us. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Our time of remembrance being over is a, still a good time to think on what magnitude of gift he has given us, what he's done for us that we could not accomplish, and a good time to pause and think of our thankfulness and what we can give back to him, not only in our money, but also in our talents and our time, our efforts. So we won't be taking up a collection, but there are plates at each of the entrances as you leave. But at this time, let's pray and and meditate on what he's done for us and thankful, how thankful we are. Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful for what you've done for us. We can't even begin to comprehend the magnitude of what was done for us by Jesus on the cross. but each one of us knows the importance to us. Father, we also know that you've given us talents. You've given us desires in our heart. You've given us strengths. And together as a body, if we put them all together to work for you, there is such power in that and and no end to what you can accomplish through this body. Father, we thank you for all that you've given us. We thank you for each one here and for each one at home watching on the video. We thank you for the talents you've given us. We thank you for the blessings you pour out on us. We thank you that we can call ourselves sons and daughters of you. For we know where our future lies. We know where our strength is. We put it all in your hands. And as we return back to you, we pray that it will be used for efforts that are pleasing in your sight to grow your kingdom and to let others know about this great sacrifice that was made for all mankind to come to you, to have salvation and eternal life with you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Song before we open God's Word together this morning is Have Thine Own Way, Lord. <clears throat> Have
Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now. As in thy presence, humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Power, all power, surely is thine. Teach me and heal me, Savior divine. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Oh, <coughs> Ying, absolute sway, fill with thy spirit, till all shall see. Christ only always living in me. Amen to that's the last song, brother. Whew. Well, that just tied up Colossians real good, didn't it? And it did a real good job as well on Romans 12, 1 and 2, didn't it? We've been transformed. We've been made new in Jesus' new creation. We are new creatures in Jesus Christ. We've been created for something better. Something better than what we were. We've been created in the image of His dear Son. And therefore we walk with Him in truth and in light and in love and in grace and in mercy and in peace and we can go on and on and on because we walk with Jesus Christ our Lord, our King and yet our brother. And we walk alongside Him in the presence of of our Father, of God, of Abba, Father, the one who wants to bring us in and hold us close. And that's the walk that we're in. We've all embarked upon this journey with God and with Jesus Christ and with one another to help and to strengthen and to uplift one another as we walk this walk together. And Paul has been talking about prayer a lot here. He's talked about us praying for one another that we might have wisdom and knowledge and understanding that we might know the will of God and know how to use it in our lives that our walk might be perfected. That it might be the walk that would bring us closer and closer day by day to Jesus Christ our Savior and to God our Father. And he says, beyond that, continue in your prayers with all earnestness, realizing the things that you need to pray for, those things that you see about you that need to be taken care of. Bring God into the picture. Don't do it on your own. Let God take charge. He is the Almighty. He is the one who changes people's hearts. He is the one who prepares the soil for the seed that we will be planting. Pray to God. 
And then pray that He'll open the doors so that we know what ground He's already prepared. So that we're not just scattering seed here or there. But we're putting the seed where the hearts have been prepared by God. The ground's already ready. And then we plant the seed. And some of us plant and some of us water. But none of us give the increase. God who prepared the soil in the first place gives the increase. That's when that plant grows up. And then it is our job to continue to nourish that plant through the word of God. And to help that plant as it grows up to become a mature plant. And a plant that does itself bear fruit as we've borne fruit with that plant. That's what we've been called to. That's what we need to be praying about. And tonight, when we get together this evening, please be here. Because we're going to, as a group, as a people of God, we're going to pray. Pray that God opens doors for us. Pray that we are strengthened and prepared and ready to walk through that door in all wisdom and understanding and knowledge. And that we might rightly do so. Because Paul not only said, pray for me that doors would be open, he said, pray that I might properly proclaim the word of truth. Pray that I, I, I proclaim it right. Pray that I have the right words to say. Do the same words work with everybody? No. When we present the word of God, we present the same word, but we might say it a little differently with different people, right? Because not everybody thinks the same way. There's different thought processes and thought patterns. And if you don't believe that, listen to me up here and talk. Listen to John Anthony up here and talk. Listen to, to, to Jeff or Alan up here talking or anybody else who's set, stood up here and talked. We don't all think alike, do we? We know the Word. We teach the Word. But we come at it from different angles sometimes, don't we? Why is that? Because our minds are not the same. We're not clones. And neither are the people we study with. So Lord, prepare me and open my eyes Amen. that when I meet that person that you've opened that door to, that I just don't go with some pat answer that I think is for everybody, but that I listen and that I hear and that I understand. And I approach it appropriately. You know, I've studied with people that are the very professional, perfect people. You don't see me being that way, do you? But I will be. Paul says that I can be all things to all men, right? Amen. <laughs> I will be. Because that's how he's going to relate to the word. And how he's going to relate to the things that are being taught. And he needs that level of, of respect and, and, and seriousness as we approach things. So we talk that way. Megan knows with other people I laugh and cut up, don't I? <laughs> and we have a good time studying the Word of God. But we learn it. And there's all kinds of things in between. But how are we going to know how to do that if we're not thinking about it in the first place? And if number two, we're not asking the one that knows. And we're not saying, God help me. It's amazing what happens when we prepare ourselves by studying the Word of God, by spending time in the Word of God, by reading the Word of God. <laughs> And by praying for this knowledge and this understanding, this wisdom, 
and how to use the Word of God appropriately. And when we've done all that, we put in our homework and we've prayed about it, we say, now God, help me know the words to use to proclaim your gospel to each individual that you put me in contact with. Do you think he won't answer that prayer? I know he'll answer that prayer. It amazes me sometimes the things that my mind remembers. And if you walked around in here a little bit, you'd wonder if I could find anything up there. But it amazes me sometimes what comes out. Why does it amaze me? Is it because I've never read it before? No, I've read it before. Is it because, you know, I had it all memorized and knew exactly where it was in the Bible? Probably not. I'd read it before, and I knew where it was at the time I read it. So it was up there somewhere. But when we've prayed to God in earnestness that He will help us at that moment when we need it most, He will deliver. He will deliver. I've been amazed sometimes when it's just like, wow, where'd that come from? You know, uh, the question is answered. It's, a, it's an earnest question. It needs to be answered it properly from the Word of God. And here comes the chapter, the book, chapter, verse. You know, every, boom, and quoted. And I think, how do I remember that? I remembered it because I asked for help. And he said, it's in there. I'll show you right where it is. It's in the file. And I know you can't remember where it is. But let me help you find it. You don't think God and the Holy Spirit can work that way? If you don't, then we still got a lot of growing to do. Because I've seen it work that way for I'm going to say since my early teens. And I know that God works. But we have to spend time in the Word and we have to prepare ourselves. And then we have to ask for help. You know, that's something that's hard for some of us, isn't it? It's hard for some of us to ask for help. We can't ask for help from one another. We can't ask for help from anybody else. Can we ask for help from God? He says, I'm here. Ask me. I'm willing and I'm ready. And we know he's able because he can do abundantly more beyond all that we can ask or even imagine. Do we ask him for help? This is not the sermon I prepared this morning. Y'all are used to hearing stuff like that, aren't you? Here it is. We, we haven't even got there. This is what we've been talking about. Do I want God and Christ to have their own way in me? See, you did it to me again, John Anthony. You did, didn't you? <laughs> I, I love your brother for it. But do we allow him to have his own way? He says, I will transform your life. I will transform your mind and your heart and your total being and I will transform you into the image of Christ. All I'm asking you is to give yourself to me. All I'm asking you is to, to say, yes, Lord, I will serve you. And then ask for my help in the walk and guess what? He's going to be there step by step every moment as we are doing His will and carrying forward His word to a lost and dying world. Are you happy with being saved? Are you glad that you're saved? Are you glad that that God in His grace and His mercy 
made a path clear for us through Jesus Christ, through the blood of His Son, for us to be saved? Are we glad that heaven awaits us? Do we believe it? Do we want others to have that same thing? How bad? How strong is our desire? How much do we pray about it? You know, we've been talking so much about prayer and and this whole thing about praying continually, constantly, earnestly, vigilantly. And to pray for open doors and to pray for the right words to say. I'm, I plan on hearing a lot of this repeated tonight in our prayers. <laughs> but do we want this? Y'all get you so used to seeing me get excited up here that you just think that's normal, right? I'm a shy person, folks. Some of you don't believe that. I am an introvert. Probably the biggest introvert you've ever seen. That tells me that God can use anybody. And if he says, I'm going to put something on your heart and you need to say it, who am I to say no? You know, if I've chosen to give myself to him, I, I got to do it. And then he puts this excitement in me so I can't help but do it. Because I know what he's done for me. What has he done for you? And how badly do you want others to know what you know and to have what you have and to know that one day one day we will be with our Father in heaven and we will know that glory and that power and that might but we'll also know that love firsthand in a way that we can't even imagine now God is alive. Jesus is alive. And they rule. Whether somebody wants to accept they rule or not doesn't change the fact that they rule. And it also doesn't change the fact that they love the world so much that Jesus laid down his life for each and every man, woman out there. Why? Because he loves us. And he doesn't want to see anyone perish. And he says, you've come to my son. Now please be my feet. Please be my hands. Please be my mouth. Please carry the message forward. Please. I'm asking you. And then he says, Pray to me and ask me for help. You're going to get help. You know you're going to get help. So it's important, isn't it, how we comport ourselves? Because that's going to be the next verses, and we won't get to them this morning. We'll go to that. We'll go there next week. But it's very important how we comport ourselves in the world so that they can see who Christ is in us. And we do that through adherence to the word of truth and through prayer. You know, I can study and study and study and study and study and I can get all the knowledge I want. And I can learn everything that's there to learn. 
But if I haven't prayed for wisdom and understanding to know how to use all that knowledge that I got, it does me little good. And it doesn't help others much either. But once I've prayed for that, and God grants prayers, right? Especially when he says, I'm asking you to pray for this. <laughs> he grants those prayers. And then he says, now that I've helped you with that, now that you've got a hold of it, now that you've got a grasp on it, he's not. we're not saying you're perfect and you know it all. But God says, I can use you. I can use you. And we say, Lord, have thine own way. Take me, Lord. Mold me and make me into that servant that you call me to be. And help me, Father, not to keep this great message to myself, but to spread it far and wide. Friend to friend, neighbor to neighbor, family to family. Father, as we come into your majesty and your power and your might before your throne, we're so humbled and we're so much in awe. But yet we know the power and the might that is yours and that you're willing to share that with us. That you're willing to share it with us so that we, Father, might be able to grow and become the children that you've called us to be. And that through that, Father, we might be able to tell others the good news, the gospel message of Jesus Christ. That, Father, all men have the opportunity to have their sins forgiven and the opportunity to have a home in heaven with you. Father, we pray that you would open doors for us to carry that gospel message and that you would quicken us, Father, that we might be ready to step through those doors and that we might be ready to teach your truth. Father, help us to know that you're definitely with us as we know you are and that you won't let us fall and falter but that you will guide us and help us as we present the truth of your world, word into this lost and dying world. Father, help us to have the heart of Jesus. Help us, Father, to be truly transformed into the image of your dear Son. And help us, Father, to realize that we have a mission. That, that mission is to spread your word and to help and uplift one another each and every day. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Good morning again. We have... Uh, few birthdays this week. Um, Everett Hollabaugh on the 28th, Jim Mischick and Flo or Chuck McCurdy on the 29th, uh, Nancy Thomas and our grandson Xander on the 1st, both of them April Fools. <laughs> Nancy's not here so I can say that. <laughs> Don't you tell her soon. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, oh. <laughs> we won't kill them. <laughs> and uh, Jenna Vaughn on the second. Does anyone else have a birthday they're celebrating this week? All right, would you join me in wishing them a happy birthday? Happy birthday to you, to Jesus be true. May God richly bless you. Happy birthday to you. Okay, uh, we have a few, well, is, I didn't see any anniversaries on the calendar. Is anybody celebrating an anniversary this week? Okay. We do have a few announcements. Uh, for the men who are in, uh, involved with the uh, worship, uh, the worship schedules for April are in the, in the vestibule where they always were before. Um, also, um, Phyllis Kerr wanted me to announce that she is the proud great-grandmother of her 13th great-grandchild on March 20th. Um, Hudson James Snyder. So if you want any more detailed information than that, you're going to need to talk to her because that's all I have. All right. Um, also, of course, as always, we have an ongoing prayer list, and please continue to pray for all of those. And even pray for all of us in this body in general. I mean, we don't always, you know, let it be made known that... that uh, we might be struggling with something or, and, but you know, you know, in your own lives, we all have something that we're dealing with at different times. So please just pray for all of us, you know. And also, uh, as Guy mentioned, don't forget that we will be here again this evening, six o'clock. So please plan to be here. Is there any other announcements? Yes, Alan. Yeah. Okay. I have a couple things. First of all, Guy, on your sermon, Jeff and I do want growth and, and activity. That's why we're starting that new program to get everyone involved with whatever talent they have to use. So my answer is yes to your question okay. during your sermon. Um, second of all, I was over to see Kathy Farrell after she had her knee surgery done. It was a success. It's just going to take a little time to recuperate and, and be back on her feet, but uh, she's doing well. And then I have a letter here from Eddie I want to read to everyone. Just received this on Friday. Uh, Hello, church family. Thank you all for your cards, prayers, and thoughts. They're very much appreciated. I finished my treatments on Friday. Hopefully, testing in the future will turn out well. I also would like to thank my brothers that helped out with my travels to treatment appointments. These trips wore me out. I really appreciate their time to take me. Love and appreciate all my church family. Eddie Williamson. final song this morning and ask our brother Jim to come and conclude our time with prayer and before we emphasize the words of the song we're about to sing words of another song are in my mind right now following the things that Guy has shared with us today and adding to the information that he shared and the Bill reiterated that we will be here this evening, that we will meet at 6 o'clock, and that the express purpose of our gathering is to pray. The hymn writer writes, Rise up, O men of God. Have done with lesser things. Give heart and mind and strength to serve the King of Kings. I'm not saying brothers. I'm talking to every brother I have here and I'm saying singularly, brother, 
We're meeting tonight to pray. Can you, will you be here? Sister, we're meeting tonight to pray. Will you come? Final song this morning. Ask the question of each one of us. Number 783, will you not tell it today? Right along with what we've been reminded of this morning, if the name of the Savior is precious to you, if His care has been constant and tender and true, if the light of His presence has brightened your way, oh, will you not tell of your gladness today? I pray that we not only sing this song together with one heart and one voice, but that we leave this place today and go into this new week that He's given us to be the people who will rise up and the people who will tell it today. If the name of the Savior is precious to you, if His care has been constant and tender and true, if the light of His presence has brightened your way, oh, will you not tell of your gladness today? Oh, will you not tell it today? Will you not tell it today? If the light of His presence has brightened your way, oh, will you not tell it today? If your faith in the Savior has brought its reward, if a strength you have found in the strength of your Lord, if the hope of a rest in His palace is sweet, oh, will you not, brother, the story repeat? Oh, will you not tell it today? Will you not tell it today? If the light of His presence has brightened your way, oh, will you not tell it today? If the souls all around you are living in sin, if the Master has told you to bid them come in, if the sweet invitation they never have heard, oh, will you not tell them the cheer-bringing word? Oh, will you not tell it today? Will you not tell it today? If the light of His presence has brightened your way, oh, will you not tell it today? Would you pray with me, please? Our Lord and our God, we give you all the honor and glory and thanks that you so rightly deserve. We give you thanks for this day and all the blessings that we have. We give you thanks for the opportunities that you give us. And Father, we pray that you, we make good use of those opportunities. We know what to say and how to say it and when to say it to show others the goodness of your love and lead others to you. Father, we're unfortunately painfully aware of all of our sick from our number, and you know their names and their needs far better than we. We ask that you be with them and comfort them, give them the healing that uh, they need, and help us to be with them and comfort them and support them in any way that we can. Father, as we leave this place and go out into the world, Keep us from the evil that so much surrounds us. Strengthen us and guide us, we ask through Jesus. Amen. Amen.